what else do we want to say? Um, uh, Max and I, we've, um, we met in grad school. Yeah. At Northwestern. And um, have been friends ever since uh, mm -hmm. 2014, right? <laughs> yeah, 2014. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I think we met really briefly at the open house, of course, but like, you know, yes. um, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that, oh, you froze for a second, maybe, Aaron, I don't know. Um, I feel like the show is like kind of a long time coming for us because we've, you know, we've worked together before uh, we were in school together. Um, We've been friends for yeah years now, and um, yeah, I don't, it's hard to like kind of put a word on on um, what about like our our like thought processes like kind of click, but um, yeah, it, it's it's a really amazing kind of opportunity to to show work with you, and I'm super glad that we could you know we could do this together. So mm -hmm. yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, whoa. Hold on. My background <laughs> feels like really ominous. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to change it. There we go. That looked like really, um, I don't know. Like I've been watching a lot of like Star Wars stuff and it looked like one of those like hologram projections for a second. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, uh, let's see. Okay. So let me open up maybe a little overview of the show. Right. And then, um, this is not the first picture we want to, all right. Can everybody see it? I can see it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, uh, where is, what's going on? I just have a bunch of windows open and I, I like kind of lost our, like, I can't see anybody now. So, you know, I'm just in like presentation mode. So excuse me. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Technical difficulties. Um, all right. So this is the show. This is kind of, you know, this isn't the first um, thing you see like when you walk in, right? But it's, it's pretty close. Maybe there's a better, yeah. Like when you walk in, it's more like this, right? Um, and so, you know, uh, we have a couple of different kind of bodies of work or like pieces. We have a lot of work. A couple of different, I think is, is kind of an understatement, but um, yeah, so Aaron has something like, what is that? That's like 18 paintings and then a bunch of drawings and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I, I don't remember the exact number of them, but uh, yeah, it was a lot. I, um, it's, it's mostly all of the work that I've made from January, 2020 to now. Um, so it's just a whole bunch of, Orcas. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, let's see. So I think, yeah, the work that I have is mostly done over the last year or so as well. Um, this piece that I'm kind of like circling right here, um, it's past, it, it's, it's title has changed a couple of times. Uh, it's called My Password. And um, I was really excited to get it back. It was actually at the, the Donnelly Foundation for a little bit, like for a year and nobody really got to see it there. So um, it seemed fitting within like the context of the, of the whole show. Um, I have this table of like 250 plus uh, index cards that I printed pretty much everything I scanned in the last year onto. Um, and then, a, and then like a series of uh, kind of landscape pieces as well. And then we have, um, let's see. So this is just another angle. Um, 
yeah, lots of lots of install shots. Um, and then we also have this kind of series. Let's see, on the opposite wall of um, of these kind of like mono prints that we were calling uh, sandwich pictures. And Aaron and I made these in like 2017, and they're just kind of a combination of um, of like pictures that we both archived. You know, like we just collected we, we collect a bunch of images on our computers and uh from the internet from wherever and um some of them we you know they're pictures that we produce um but we combined you know our two kind of collections and um each of these prints is an inkjet print that we ran through a printer you know maybe two or three times with pictures um and so it all lays super flat and it just kind of they come to overlap and create new forms um really kind of trippy complex images um yeah yeah and so it was it was just another kind of opportunity to share these pieces um or it, it is an opportunity it's like our first opportunity to do it um and i think this was kind of originally one of the bases like of the show. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've got these pieces. Yeah, I, uh, I, mm -hmm. I was just remembering like, um, or at least trying to remember because it was a while ago when we made these. Mm -hmm. It was like a year or maybe even a half a year after school. And, yeah. uh, and we had, um, uh, I think, you know, grad school can be really uh, exhausting and images and having to sort of explain things. Um, and I think we just sort of wanted to make something together and, and uh, play around. And, and um, we just kind of like had fun in the computer lab. Yeah. Creating these compositions and not really knowing what would come out of it in terms of printing your, your images being printed on top of mine and vice versa, um, which is kind of exciting to sort of see the outcome of the each image. Yeah, and you know what's funny when you when you put it that way, it's 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 kind of interesting because it's like we went back and used the grad school facilities after being in school and almost like rebelliously like use the facilities to just do whatever we wanted instead of um you know worrying about like the kind of authoritative position of our teachers and and like them asking us like why we were doing things or what we were doing mm -hmm. um which i yeah i think that was like a really important and kind of necessary step maybe moving forward um yeah I mean, personally, for sure, just to loosen up again and, and um, kind of do things without, without doubt in a way mm -hmm. and to kind of, uh, yeah, like trust some like impulse, um, which maybe is a, like kind of a good way to, to get back to some of your work or, or um, some of the other pieces in the show, right? Yeah. Um, just talking about like following impulses and I'm really curious about um you know like your paintings uh and just you know you you've created like a really uh I mean you you've like the the work that you've made over the last couple of years has been like enormous right like you've just had like a tremendous kind of body of painting um and I'm really curious to to know how you arrived at like, um, first of all, painting orcas, but painting them the way that you you have been, which seems like a little different from um, some of your larger, you know, paintings that were dealing with like digital images and 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 um, you know, like digital printing processes and reconciling the two, or reconciling that with painting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if there's any, you know, like I can kind of just go through these, but if there's any one that you want me to stop at, these are just the photos that. Um, that if you want to stop at the one that has the hand in it. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Okay. Let's see. Um, yeah, that one. Okay. Uh, uh, so this was kind of, I think I want to say maybe the first one um, that I painted. Um, and <laughs> I mean, I can talk so much about orcas. I have, I've become obsessed and <laughs> Max knows this because <laughs> I've like talked with him about it for a long, long time. Um, but uh, I, uh, uh, the, I think sort of the, the main um, impulse for me to start making all of these paintings was um, this dream that I had. Um, and uh, I, um, I had this dream basically that was um, uh, me in water by a city. And I, I assume it was Chicago, but, or maybe New York, but I don't know. Um, but uh, I was like right by a city in the water and then um, uh, and then a, a huge orca sort of popped up next to me and um, and I was like afraid and then a little baby orca popped up also and I just it was like the the baby orca kind of telepathically psychically something communicated um, that everything is okay and going to be okay, and that I should trust to swim deeper. Um, and that, like, it was such a vivid dream that it really stuck with me. And I wanted to, um, you know, really treat that dream with respect and um, and confidence and in trusting myself, um, but also trusting that message to also share with other people. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so it just sort of been like, was this feverish kind of way in which, well, it was maybe not feverish, but like, uh, I would just go into my studio and um, uh, whenever I had the time um, and would just paint an orca, um, usually just one uh, each sitting and then leave. This one took a little bit longer because it was bigger, but um, it was just sort of me working with these images and um, that I uh, printed black and white images of these orcas and just sort of painting from them. Um, and it was kind of like me trying to listen to them or listen to what they wanted to say. It wasn't necessarily um, me wanting to sort of put out a lot of um, um, messages in a certain sense, like the, in my past work, like you're asking Max, like um, I think I really thought very hard about how one thing is situated against a, an, another in terms of digital and painted. And um, I kind of threw all of that out um, and just started to try to uh, paint with, um, just paint, paint freer, paint, just to be free and not worry so much if it was a bad mark or it if it was um, uh, kind of a, um, uh, the best painting. I, so this one I kind of unfolded in, in thinking about communication in terms of like a hand and a human's hand um, connecting with um, an animal, uh, the orca and sort of understanding each other. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I can stop now. I, we can go into a little bit more a little later, but um, that's uh, a little bit of what I was thinking. And um, yeah, no, yeah. you can like go off. That's awesome. I mean, this is like, um, you know, I, I, I guess one thing that I realized like we never talked about because I had seen some of these before, but um, I mean, had, have you ever seen an orca like in, in person? I, um, I haven't seen one in person. That's so wild. Yeah, and I, I really want to. Um, oh, and I guess another important point that sort of 
that will be kind of cool to transition into talking a little bit about your work too, Max, is that um, after this dream, I started to see orcas everywhere. And, um, and, and then like, at, like at thrift stores, like um, just walking around, like I would just see an image of an orca. And then um, the uh, this, this Oracle deck that I, um, that I use, um, it's called uh, Nature Nurture by Marcella Kroll. And I also kept getting this card um, that says um, records on it. And, um, and it's an image of an orca. I can just kind of, I don't know if anyone can see this or not. <laughs> no, <laughs> but they, um, well, well, I'll try and show it later maybe. But, um, but yeah, so it says records and it was just that word really stumped me for a while. I was thinking about like, what, what is records? What do I have to think about with records? And um, finally it kind of made sense to me a little bit of just sort of like thinking about familial um, records, um, like, or like just what my lineage and thinking about th those relationships and orcas being such um, so interested and invested in their own families and caring for one another. Um, and, uh, and so that sort of got me really trying to like embrace um, both the good and, and bad of, um, of what I am related to and um, trying to sort of uh, dig deeper into that. I feel like that was kind of a message for me too. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so that, that, that sort of to, to transition to, because I want to talk about um, uh, your relationship to uh, especially your most recent work on the table connecting to uh, tarot and and uh, I want to know if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, you know, there's something you said just now about like records and I was thinking about record keeping too and and uh, maybe that this is relevant, but like, you know, the fact that you've kind of created in, in the last year your own um, like archive of like orca pictures, just, you know, it's, it's like this weird, um, like a, like an archive or like a record of like your unconscious during the time, you know? Um, I think that, uh, you know, as, as anybody here as listeners will like, you know, soon come to understand, we both have this kind of interest in, I guess, things like, yeah, mysticism, spirituality, um, the unconscious. Uh, one of our teachers in school really kind of um, like pushed that on us as, as part of her curriculum. And uh, I think that we both, you know, really followed it. But yeah, so um, here, here's a close up of, of this table and this kind of spread of images. Uh, what I did was I have, you know, a number of um, scans and different photographs and prints that I, you know, printed onto um, four by six index cards. And they're kind of close to the scale of some tarot card decks, you know, um, but they are very, in, you know, the spread itself and the organization um, and this idea of keeping things on cards is um, inspired by my reading of tarot. Uh, I've read for about five years and um, actually I think, you know, in conceiving of this show, Aaron and I went shopping for a tarot deck, which was really fun uh, and it's a nice coincidence. But um, yeah, tarot is really interesting to me because it's a way of kind of organizing a number of images that, um, you know, they do have some connection um, but a lot of the connections and a lot of the ties you make, you know, unconsciously, and you also, um, you know, come to derive meaning through like the organization of all the pictures. Um, so I was, you know, I've, I've made a number of these pictures uh, throughout the last year, specifically the more like abstracted ones um, are from 
they're, they're from a series of photographs where I, um, I made a box and I put the box above uh, the bed of a flatbed scanner. And so they took these really kind of, um, I don't know, like, I guess, mysterious photos. I don't really know how to describe them. They're just kind of, uh, they play with depth in a really kind of confusing way. And, um, you know, as, as I, I put a number of objects in these boxes basically and experimented with how um, the scanner perceives depth and perceives light and reflection of light and color um, alongside, you know, some of the other images are like Dutch landscape paintings from a book that I've carried around with me for, um, for like almost seven, eight years or something. And um, I, I just, I don't really, I don't know how to explain that except um, at one point I was doing you know, uh, some research into landscape paintings and these, these paintings really moved me. Um, but what I've done here is I've sort of inverted uh, the dimensions of each of the landscape paintings. So um, in terms of like the print, the height of each of these images uh, and the width were switched around. So everything's like scrunched in. Um, giving it a kind of warped uh, feeling. Um, even, if the, even if the images kind of look, uh, you know, recognizable, there's this kind of uncanny feel. Um, and I put them together just to see what they might look like. You know, this is the more abstracted pieces are very kind of like interior space. Um, and in some way, um, I don't know if they're like representative of an unconscious, but they're just these abstractions that you often see in a tarot card deck, uh, depending on you know the kind of deck you read. Um, and then same with landscape, you know, same with landscape and figure. Uh, somehow in tarot card readings, all of these things come together um, to to create a more like complete simulated world where you can, you know, kind of come to understand yourself and have like knowledge of yourself in a, in a way. Um, yeah, but I, I don't know if that answers your question. Like, uh, I yeah, I got into tarot just because I, I liked that I could check in with myself, mm. you know, um, through, through like, a, like an interpretation of pictures and through an analysis of pictures. Um, and it was a social thing too, you know, it's like the meaning isn't just what you ascribe to it. It's a, uh, it's your tradition that you're, you're really following. It's a game that you're playing and there are rules to it. Um, you kind of learn to make meaning based on your relationship with other people. And when you read for other people, um, when they read for you and, um, you start to learn how to ask questions a certain way. You start to see, how you ask questions, what you're afraid of, what you're interested in, what you're, um, what makes you laugh, you know, what you can joke about. Um, and when you don't want to, when you want to know something and when you don't want to know something, uh, what you know, what you don't know, mm -hmm. all of those things. Um, and that really comes down to the way that you kind of organize the cards too, you know? I mean, I, I read a, a card a day typically, but, um, and there's 78 cards in a tarot deck, but you know, this has maybe like 250 cards just spread out on the table. Um, the table's something like eight feet by 12 feet also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm also curious because I don't think we've ever talked about this, but I know you did a class at the Hyde Park Park Art Center about um, making like making games, uh, right with them. Yeah. And I and I was just sort of thinking too about like your relationship to your work and games and like because you you yeah I've talked to you about your work as being like um, used as also a study tool in terms of making collages and learning 
um, a language and then now these images are being put onto flashcards to think through tarot and I'm and I'm wondering like uh, how you think about art art being a game or mm -hmm. yeah um yeah I love games I don't know I love playing games um I like video games I like board games I like card games less card games I don't I don't play too many card games I just have a lot of tarot cards um and it's yeah it's um sometimes I don't you know like I don't know the rules I don't know the rules and regulations I'm like kind of or I don't know like my playing style, things like that. Like it's uh, with a lot of games, it's more intuitive. Um, and especially now it's like, I play games on like apps, you know, against computers and against random people across the world, like words with friends. I'm like really into words with friends. If anybody wants to play me in that, uh, do it. <laughs> um, hit me up. I'm, I'm, uh, I think I'm leaf bootleg on, on words with friends. Anyway, um, yeah, I I think games allow me to um, think about different systems in the world, you know, uh, because they're always structured around something like analogous to a way of thinking or like a philosophy in the, you know, in 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 the actual like in the physical world in the in the real world or something. Um, games are practice, you know, they're, they're practice and they're, um, they're, they're competitive at times, you know, um, I mean, most of the time they're competitive, I would say, but, um, I was definitely one of those kids who like at the soccer game was like, yo, it's not about winning. It's about having fun, you know, and like getting carried away with that. Um, I'm not like a particularly competitive person. Um, but yeah, uh, other games that I've used are like Go. I've thought about the structure of games and like the regulation of them. Um, you know, uh, I use a lot of clocks in my work. Like the other piece that I have has has clocks, like scans of them um, kind of collaged onto this canvas. And I think about, you know, time in, in terms of games and like a long game versus a short game and art is a very long game. Um, and I think about things like, you know, time control is like one concept of game playing. Uh, and tarot is also kind of a game. It's a, it's like a, it's a different kind of game. It's not competitive, you know, it's like one of those games that's, uh, it's really fluid, you know, it's like you can do so much with, with 78 cards and just like a tiny, you know, like a, like a deck that you can bring everywhere. And, Mm -hmm. tell stories with it allows structure mm -hmm. yeah um yeah yeah i think even you know it's like i even though i'm interested in this kind of like mystical stuff or like the mystical elements of of the tarot and like the esoteric elements i i've always kind of thought of it more as a game first mm -hmm. um which i guess maybe you know, um, going back to some of your work too, I'm, I'm wondering, um, you know, you have like a pretty mystical uh, like practice too. I mean, just following your dreams this way. Uh, if we think about like the water I, um, in all of your, in all of your pieces, you know, and just like uh, thinking of that as like the subconscious, which is I think what the tarot kind of invites us to think about water as. Mm -hmm. um, I just wonder, yeah, maybe if you could talk a little bit about that and also what it kind of means to have like a sort of mystical, like art or like spiritual kind of art practice right now. Yeah. Um, well, I feel like um, right now, you know, we're for the most part, we're all having to be very separate and in our own sort of psyches <laughs> a lot of the time and um and i think that that sort of 
opens up the possibility for us to really dig deeper within our subconscious. And, um, and I think that was a, a part of what encouraged me to, to make this work was I was like, right. I, don't, I don't have anybody to, <laughs> to impress. I don't have anybody to talk to. I just, I'm here in my studio. And so here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this for, for me. Um, uh, and sort of feeling like I'm talking to <laughs> these uh, orcas. And um, yeah, I, I feel like when it was interesting when you were talking about how you, you, um, you feel like the, the tarot is like a game first and then you sort of enter into it and sort of mystic like within the mystical spiritual. I, I, uh, I like wholeheartedly dive right in <laughs> to, yep. to uh, mysticism and spirituality. Like I, um, uh, like I trust these orcas with my life. <laughs> like I, I want to like believe them and hear them. And, and when, uh, and when I pull cards too, I, I take it, um, like, well, at least for, for the most part, sometimes I'm, I'm playful too, like a game. Like I, I ask, like, a, like I was telling you, I, I ask like my, my plant, how they're doing with tarot sometimes. And, um, uh, but I, uh, yeah, I think the, the, I don't know, I kind of lost my train of thought, <laughs> but um, I, um, yeah, I guess this work um, has kind of also brought me to think about um, how to even access um, uh, trusting my um, instinct or intuition within a spiritual realm. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I've been learning um, how to um, do this moving meditation. I've been learning about Chinese tea ceremony and it's just been this beautiful practice um, where I really am sitting with the tea and, and sitting with just being. And um, that's also opened up so much for me of being able to sort of trust my inner knowing. Um, and, uh, Sometimes when I'm like sitting there meditating after a, a bowl of warm tea, I see colors come into my eyes. Um, and that's, and a part of me kind of feels like, um, like maybe that is a spirit or, um, or a friend who had passed away that's coming to say hello for a, a brief second. And so um, some of those orbs that are sort of floating within uh, the, orcas too it, it's i it, this it, some of this is just sort of like i i wonder i think that um you know being immersed in water being immersed in the subconscious if these orcas you know have a connection to spirituality or to these things that that we don't um always have access to a little bit more readily and so i i just I, it sort of is me visualizing like um uh their connection yeah. to that space um in a more fluid way than than me that's like i don't know this is far out you know <laughs> yeah. um yeah. and i'm just thinking like i'm trying to i'm like searching through like my deck right now you know like looking for um i mean this is really where like the cups like as as like a metaphor comes in because i don't know if you guys know but the cups and the swords are like two suits in in a in a typical like traditional tarot deck um and actually you know they have an equivalent in playing cards too so um swords are spades and then cups are hearts and um if you can make that correlation you know i think um aaron's really kind of speaking from the heart right now and also you know the cups come to re like represent things like the unconscious and um, you know connecting with like your inner life and trusting um, like trusting it and following it but specifically there's a card called the moon which is like related to um, related to cups uh, specific and and more specifically through water and through um, 
just imagining life outside of your own. Um, you know, it shows like a crab kind of emerging from, or not a crab, like a lobster or something, like emerging from a pond at night. Um, and that's, you know, very similar to all of these whales like breaching the surface. It's, it's like representative of um, like your unconscious or your spiritual, spirituality like manifesting itself. So um, I think it was like a really kind of apt and, um, and like beautiful uh, like kind of metaphor in a, in a way, you know, it's, it's really potent. Um, but maybe I'll just show the Ace of Cups because I found that one. And then right after it in my deck was the Ace of Swords, which I think is maybe, you know, the Swords talks a little bit more about the mind and, um, you know, it, it, maybe in opposition, not really in opposition, I think, to the, to the Cups, but just another element of like thinking through things and, and making sense of the world um, and connecting, you know, our thoughts to, to things that, uh, you know, exist um, in space, you know, so maybe just kind of going back to this, this game theme. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna, f I'll find the moon. I'll find it. That's really uh, cool that you, I didn't even think about the moon, but um, so I, I've been learning a little bit about astrology and my chart. Hmm. And, um, I guess it was when I was, so based on the degrees of where different planets are in your chart, it's basically um, the first number, yeah, you have to sort of calculate it. You can calculate it based on, the first number is basically the year that you met that planet or that um, uh, where it sort of impacted you in your life and sort of it, where you met it in the same degree that you were, were born. Mm. And uh, and the moon had c come back around <laughs> and met me when I was, uh, I guess, 27, 28. Um, and, and I think that sort of jump-started my, um, my trusting of, of my spiritual um, sort of side or sort of th thinking through this. Um, and this is just also kind of funny. It was that uh, we were driving down to Springfield today, and I was like, "Jeff, I need my neck pillow. I need to sleep." <laughs> and but my, I wish I had it. It's this red neck pillow that has a little lobster on it. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. And I found the I found the card. I don't know if I'm gonna hold it up properly, but you guys see it? I I mean I see it. I don't know if everybody else. Does. Okay. Cool. Yeah, there's like a little lobster and then there are two dogs that are like howling at the moon. Um, and, you know, the dogs are me and Aaron. Yes. And then the rest is like, you know, us like just kind of being in touch with our, our subconscious. Um, let's see. Also, I don't know like what time we have, you know, like we could just keep rolling. Um, but yeah, I wish there was, I don't know, the, 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 um, the moon card kind of speaks to me as well, I think. Just, um, you know, there, especially, I guess, with, um, with some of the scanned pieces, I like don't know why I'm, you know, it's just, I, I, I've been scanning stuff for like a long time. Like I have a number of these images. Um, you know, uh, I, I scanned clocks, I scanned fire, I scanned ice, I scanned um, all kinds of elements and different objects and things. Um, and it's really kind of like, maybe it's kind of a dumb process. I don't really know, but it also- I think it's fascinating. Yeah, like I think it's, it's like allowing myself to be like mesmerized by something, you know? And the circumstances maybe of, uh, of like working through them. Um, you know, I turn the lights off in my studio. Um, I have to sit in the dark, I have to, you know, it has to be quiet at times. Um, 
and I really just set up a situation in which it's like nothing except me being in this dark room and I've essentially disappeared. So it's just like two objects kind of meeting each other, you know, it's like the camera itself. And then, um, you know, whatever object I've placed on it or next to it, you know, like in proximity. So it's, um, it's really just taking a picture that is, uh, you know, like the outcome is going to be entirely alien to anything that I can see, but I can, I have to like imagine it basically. And it's become a little easier as, I, as I've like gone along to imagine what kind of pictures it'll produce. Um, yeah, just thinking about other spaces and possibilities. Yeah, I, I, um, I remembered in school, like people would, were talking about how you would like light incense, bring in flowers, like it really felt like this ritual, like romantic space <laughs> that yeah. you um, were sort of getting to know um, how your scanner works and how the eye of the scanner. Um, and, uh, and I remember talking to you and you're just like, I don't, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just making images. <laughs> like, and and uh, I like, you didn't know what, where to put them. Like you were hanging them up or um, uh, printing them out. And, but it, it, it was more than that. Like, you know, like, I think that you kind of discount it, but it really is like this really um, in-depth um, uh, investigation in, uh, in image making and how those things come together through uh, this technology <laughs> and um, yeah, it's yeah. really cool. It's like, I mean, I, I don't know, it's like hard to make pictures. I think also uh, when, when we were in school, there was a lot of doubt around like any, pos any further possibilities for like image making, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of like cynicism around it. And I think it was maybe just you know, on, on, on the one hand, our teachers trying to like sell us something um, and like push a certain agenda away from things like painting or, or print or, or what have you. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's tough to find um, like a new pictorial space and like new ground. Yeah. Well, uh, um, I know we have like 13 minutes, but before we open it up to people, I, I wanted to also ask about the other piece that's uh, of yours that's in the show that is um, that is of the big clock. Mm. Uh, and I, I was just also curious about your relationship to time. I really liked when you said um, that art is a very long game. Um, I, I've never thought of it like that, but I really think that that's true. Um, but uh, yeah, like, cause you've worked with a metronome, uh, sort of working with that, that beat um, or tempo and, um, and yeah, so I was just sort of curious too about your relationship to time. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think, Honestly, like, um, yeah, it, I think time is just something that um, I've been interested in because people communicate it very differently. You know, uh, it might have been something that I picked up in like when I was um, like really starting out, you know, like in, in undergrad or something. I've always been interested in movies and the way that they communicate time. Uh, what was that book? Uh, uh, a uh, hundred years of solitude by um, Gabriel Garcia Marquez um, was like a really influential book for me when I was like in high school, actually, and it just kind of had this very specific timeline to it that um, that I had never really experienced anywhere else. And um, it's about like, like a, a family in like a in like colonial Colombia and like generations of them. Um, living in this town and just and and kind of experiencing uh, the town and that world and it's really interior but um, I like guess oh sorry I, I, I heard something but um, 
But anyway, I'm, I'm kind of digressing. Um, I mean, specifically with like clocks and metronomes and being able to visualize time, um, you know, I, I thought it was interesting because a scanner specifically when documenting these things, you know, it, it makes a composite of a number of, um, of pictures. So as the camera moves across the bed of the scanner, it's capturing like minute details line by line, almost like reading, it, you know, so it's like reading time, you know, uh, in a way, um, the metronome or the clock becomes like a text. I, I don't know. But also the more detail that you want, like the, the higher the DPI on the scanner, which is like dots per inch or pixels per inch, the more, um, the more minutia like per second you can get. And you can't see it that well here because, you know, I broke this image up. This was just kind of a way of keeping, you know, clocks interesting to me and creating like a mandala style like form from, from multiple pictures. But uh, this RGB, this like rainbow here is the second hand on the clock, for example. And so it's starting to like, the, the camera starts to like split up time, basically. Um, and then you can read it in a way, and you can kind of interpret the amount of time it took uh, to actually make a picture, you know, like they're like, I, I think that's been like one big goal of mine to figure out how um, to have a picture that like shows you how many seconds it took to take the picture. Uh, and, you know, in, in, in like one way, I'm, I'm getting very close to it. Uh, and I think this was like a step in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I don't know, I think there are a lot of, you know, there's things like memento mori and, and like all of these classical modes of painting that'll show you, um, they'll show you time as like, a, as a reminder of like, our mortality or our lifespan, but they won't show you time in terms of like how much time has lapsed. Um, and I think there, there are a lot of ways of doing that, you know, like that's maybe like a, a more photographic thing to think about, but um, yeah, it's, this is just another way of doing that. This is like a, a kind of new frontier in some way, yeah. old frontier. Um, yeah, cool. I, um, yeah, I also just uh, am interested uh, <laughs> um, in how, um, the just like the time of this show like a, around a year ago we were talking about this show and we um had uh um put uh start we went we had lunch and then went to a tarot shop and um i was also just thinking to pia had written in the chat if we could speak to the nature of collaboration energetically yeah. uh, since you, we both touched upon this inner uh, individually. Um, and um, yeah, that's a really good question. Do you have things you wanna say about that yet? We can think about it. Um, let me think and let me plug my computer in too. Um, so I, I, me... well, I can say one thing. Yeah. So, uh, this is a little bit off topic, but similar in that, like, um, when, uh, when, when I was talking to you about um, uh, orcas, you mm -hmm. had brought up that they were apex predators. Oh, and, yeah. And, um, and I, that was like, like, I don't think I've ever told you this, but like, I, uh, whenever we would, would talk about it, I would be like, oh, but there's so much more than that. Like they love, <laughs> they love each other. They like are so smart. Like they, they um, only like the, the orcas in the Pacific Northwest only eat salmon, like all these things. And I would just keep listing, listing, listing. And it was interesting because um, uh, relating so much to the orca and, and feeling protective about it in certain senses, like I, I didn't want to admit the power um, of the orca, like the intensity that orcas give off and like that they don't have any other um, animal that could eat them, <laughs> you mm. know? And, um, and I, so uh, I don't know. I just made me think of that and, and, and how I, 
how there's there's both things to think about in terms of um, the energy of of an image and and working with that image and I um, and when we were meeting to talk about the show, you came to my studio and I was like, I don't know, this is what I've been making. I don't know if it's, if you'd be into <laughs> like having a show with a whole bunch of orcas or not. Um, and, uh, uh, and then you were like, no, yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I mean, I, I think that there's a lot of trust between the two of us. Um, and I think that we can really like vibe on certain wavelengths and that's probably because of our like friendship and our, our you know, our history together. But, um, I also remember like going in and being like, yo, you're the whale. Like, that's you. Like you are. And like, just really kind of riffing on that and just thinking about this kind of, uh, I don't know, just just being able to like match that energy and, and just kind of follow through uh, seems really important when collaborating, you know, just speaking about speaking on this energy um, and kind of committing to a certain mentality. And I think, um, you know, a, a, as difficult or as like uh, relieving as it might've been for you to show, uh, to show all of these whales, I think it was equally important and like um, freeing for me to feel like I could, print a bunch of stuff on index cards and create like this kind of composition and really think through it. Um, you know, it's not something that, you know, uh, like it, it, it's not something that is as, um, like there's intent, you know? And um, I think that part of the energy that maybe P is speaking to is also just the intent of, of like, um, of working together and showing together. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I, I was also just thinking like we um you know we met and talked about it and um and I just felt like like you said like we just trust each other and I think that goes a long way in knowing that like you trusted me and I trusted you and then we could just feel free to try and and see how work um, could fit and flow in that space and it just happened and worked in an awesome way and I, and I don't think that that can always um, happen with everybody so that that's awesome yeah yeah I feel really um I mean I'm still I'm still kind of processing it you know uh but I feel really fortunate and like to have like a, a friend like you and also to be able to show um and, and express this kind of like creative freedom at this time. You know, it's like really uh, like very much a blessing. Um, yeah, I think also, you know, part of it, then we can kind of, I think once we get to that like point, you know, like that having that energy, it's like we have the freedom to make really uh, wild images like these that like, you know, I don't know if they would, come about without a kind of like mutual trust and respect. Like these are really bizarre. <laughs> yeah. Like, what is this? What is this? This is like a dude with like ice cream in the middle and there's an egg and it's like all his food and the cats, like, what is <laughs> But then, you know, there's, there's like a lot of dynamic stuff kind of going on within all of them. Um, I saw a question also about the title for that piece, the um, my password, and really, I guess I just named it that because it's like um, the image itself because is kind of like a cipher, you know. Um, just building on what I was saying before about uh, where is it? Yeah. yeah. Also, the sh what about the shape too? Oh, the shape is um, uh, so. Honestly, the shape was kind of inspired by like a, a Buddha's head at first. Um, and then I really like pushed it out of that space or I, like I tried to. I don't think it's really recognizable as that any any longer. <clears throat> um, but I had done a number of like smaller cutouts that were like, you know, maybe eight by 10 or something that were shaped like a Buddha's head. Uh, and I could never get the form right. 
you know, even though I, you know, like I went to the art Institute and I like studied like a certain like head there. I love going to that. There's like that one segment that has a number of like Buddhist and like Hindu um, sculptures, you know, uh, and I was looking at those forms. There was one where he just, you know, it's like the lighting on the, on the face and everything is just, it looks like it would like he'd open his eyes and like say hi to you or something. And um, I wasn't going to get that, you know, but um, yeah, the, the shape uh, is inspired by that. And then, you know, eventually I just kind of, I wanted something different. I wanted to kind of start testing like dyeing fabrics on or like dyeing canvas. Um, it's got a really nice kind of like velvety, like matte feel to it but also just make it a, a picture that is like, in person, it feels a little less stable or something. You know, it feels like um, these two circles are like off kilter a little bit. Uh, there's this symmetry, but then there's like some asymmetry within the picture. Um, and so I was just trying to make like a dynamic, unstable picture that also, um, yeah, maybe you could kind of like uh, decode something from it. You know, how much time has passed in, in the picture and in the production, at least of, of uh, at least of, of the clocks, you know. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's that. Um, oh, uh, Doug Hayden, go cats. <laughs> Yeah, my dad. <laughs> he wrote uh, Northwestern's up 10 to 6. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's cool. <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, it's, all, it, it's all happening <laughs> at once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I mean, we're kind of over time, but you know, that's, that's chill. Um, I could keep talking with you, you know, like forever. Uh, but let's see. I think we've asked most of the questions because um, we also like, you know, thought about some questions ahead of time. Yeah. Um, and I think some of them have been answered just like in, in the process of, of talking about this um, or, or like through, through this talk. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. Are yeah. there any questions that like you wanted to be asked before that you haven't been asked? Um, you know, I was trying to think of this because you you had asked me this. I um, I think that the question, like, if there was a question that um, that somebody that I wish would ask was like. Um, I was like, like, what do you believe in? Like, what do you like? I don't know. <laughs> I, I think that uh, I, I think that a lot of the time my images and the things that I work with can be so like seemingly easy to understand of like, oh, yeah, orcas or oh, yeah, crystals and butter or eggs like it's it's like a real easy word to identify and know what it is but I think um uh underneath that I I just I don't know I guess I just ho hope <laughs> that that there's more um more belief or trust in um in that there's more to that and that there's like um uh more to um I don't know how to describe this, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess maybe just taking it more seriously, but it's not really a question. I just yeah. like, like, so, like I was telling you the other day, like some, a friend of mine was just like, oh, of course, um, of course orcas, cause a kitsch. And I was like, yes, orcas are kitschy, but they're not like, it's, it's a totally, like different relationship that I have with orcas that I could go on forever. Um, so it's 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 both can be in the category of kitsch, but also so much more that has to do with what I believe. 
come. Uh, what about you? Do you have anything about that, that question? I do. And I guess I ask because like, I don't really have an answer, you know? <laughs> um, but I think in, in, in like maybe, maybe it's a tough question also because like all the things that you would want to answer are the things that you like make work about, right? Like that's, that's kind of what happens. We're like, uh, the things that you, you wish people would ask are the things that you're like asking yourself and kind of answering through your work or something. I guess I feel that way. Um, Cause yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know, I don't know what I would, what I'd want to be asked. Uh, yeah, like, like in hindsight also, I realized I was like, man, what is this question? Is it like, uh, what would you want to like mansplain to somebody, you know, or like. Well, I guess also like maybe what I want to be, I, maybe I don't want to be asked anything. Like maybe yeah. that's what I want <laughs> because I feel like a lot of, like, especially in school, like we were being asked so many questions. Yeah. And sometimes you don't have to a answer them. You just experience the thing and feel it and trust it. Um, I don't know. I, I, uh, I pulled a card, Max. Um, just, um, and it was the uh, sleeping man, oh, yeah, cool. the unconscious number 31. Um, and I thought that was really fitting, um, us talking about the unconscious um, and the moon. Um, uh, but yeah. yeah, yeah. That is fitting. I just pulled the, uh, the seven, this is a seven, right? Yeah, seven of coins. I have no clue what that, I mean, it's kind of like, um, maybe this card is a show, you know, it's like a, it's like a harvest. Yes. You know, coins are, are related to material and they're, um, they have like, um, yeah, they, there's like a material interest, you know, there's like a working with it or or harvesting it or gardening it and there's like kind of a care or something to it that I think um has definitely like manifest itself in this show yeah this is really like it was like a crazy harvest right we were like whoa I can't believe like when we were installing it's like I, I can't believe we're still installing stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's so much yeah yeah cool. uh, well, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, tell, let me know what you think. I feel like this is kind of a good place to stop. And if there's any other questions anybody wants to ask, um, but yeah, Just email us. Yeah, you can also email us. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, ooh, what's that? Holly said thank you. Oh, thanks, Holly. I want to say something. I want to thank both of you for doing this talk. Um, we've had so many people come see the exhibition and they love it. Um, I also wanted to say if anyone hasn't seen the exhibit, we're open today. We're open right now till 6 p.m. and then tomorrow 1 to 5. So definitely stop by to see the exhibition IRL. <laughs> check it out. Definitely. And check out um, the group show next door as well. It's yeah. And it's an amazing like compliment to uh, to like the real like uh, yeah they're just uh, like I can't even explain it they're just like very spiritually complimentary it's it's yeah it's it's cool yeah um, yeah yeah Pia did such an amazing job curating that exhibition and um, I'm I'm just so thankful that um, uh, Alma and um, Francine and everybody at Heaven Gallery for the help in this show and especially um, uh, one of my best friends, Max, thank you so much for showing with me. Um, I'm so grateful. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you guys for doing this. Absolutely. We're so grateful. Yeah, that's rad. Uh, cool. Have a good weekend, everybody. Uh. Yes. Bye. <laughs> bye. bye.